Hi, students. So this is our second lecture and the end of day three. This lecture is going to tell you or show you how to start and finish an essay with introduction and conclusion paragraphs. So your introduction paragraph helps you start the essay and your conclusion paragraph will help you finish the essay. So let's take a look at what these are like. Okay, for your introduction, it serves the purpose uh, of focusing your reader's attention on the subject. And your subject is the big topic. And it arouses curiosity, which means getting them interested, generating interest. The paragraph also specifies your topic and leads the reader to learn about your attitudes and approaches on it. And that follows up with the last sentence of your introduction, the thesis statement, your big idea, or your big controlling idea, what you think about the big topic. about the big topic. Okay. So your introduction should be sincere and concise, honest and to the point. So there are four parts in the introduction and I'm going to show you this with a Microsoft Word example. So my introduction paragraph we're going to have supporting paragraphs which you know how to do by now and you have a conclusion paragraph so to review your supporting paragraphs would have a topic sentence have supporting sentences. That's one supporting sentence two supporting sentence three and your concluding sentence. So I'll put these in point form just so you can see in in bullet points and it gets less confusing. So your introduction paragraph has four parts as well. We're going to look at those now. The first part is the hook. So these things you see here are ways you can make a hook, your big topic sentence. It's also called an attention grabber. So it can be a quote that refers to a fax or a saying, but we want to stick with facts. Okay, and then anecdotes, so somebody's story or what happened, uh, somebody's opinion for or against, historical comparisons, an image maybe, a problem or dilemma, so some big issue or something bold and shocking. Generally, if you're talking about the topic, you'd want to stick with maybe facts or an incident about something or something maybe historical if you're writing about the history. So the first sentence is a hook or attention grabber. So the funnel structure is for your introduction paragraph. And here you see four things, a hook, general statements about your topic, research questions, and thesis statement. So these go from general 
to specific. Okay, and your thesis statement is the answer, your answer, to the research question. Okay. Alright, so the first thing we covered is the hook, which is an attention grabber. So let's take a look here in this sample introduction paragraph. Okay, so we have, let's count the sentences. We have one sentence, two sentences, three sentences, four sentences. That's it. Okay, so here we have one, two, three, and four. So the first sentence then should be a hook. Let's read it. We Canadians love our donut shops. So this is more of an opinion, but as a Canadian who's lived here for many years, I would agree with this. We have Tim Hortons, for example. I'm just thinking out loud, but this is your hook. So looking at this slide, we can see what the next sentence is. General statements about your topic. The next sentence reads, from coast to coast, you'll find Canadians gathering in donut shops. So this is a general statement about the topic and the topic here is about donut shops and it's specifically Canadians in donut shops and Canadians love donut shops. They love them so much in fact you can find them everywhere. So that's your general statement about the topic. <clears throat> Now, the next sentence should be a research question. Let's take a look. We gather there not just to eat and drink, but also to talk, to discuss, to see, and to be seen. So, let's see if this is a research question. It should be, but let's check. So, this talks about what people do at donut shops eating and drinking but not just that they talk discuss and to either look for people or to be seen by people it's not necessarily a research question let's take a look if the fourth sentence is a thesis statement what the cafe is to french public life what the pub is to english neighborhood so the donut shop is central to canadian social life okay so, we're going to talk about the thesis statement. Uh, for now, I'll just explain it. The last sentence is a thesis statement, not only because is it at the end of your introduction paragraph. So, if you're writing your essay, in your opinion essay, your thesis statement, whether you agree or disagree with the article you read, should be here. The last sentence of your first paragraph. Last sentence of first introduction paragraph. So if I'm looking for your thesis statement, that's where I'm going to find it. Or well, that's where I should find it. And the thesis statement for this sentence is Canadian donut shops or donut shops in Canada is central to Canadian social life. So we have the topic here. It's still on the topic of donut shops in Canada. And my controlling idea is not about Canadians liking their donut shops, is that donut shops are central, important to Canada's social life. So at least we have the four parts that we need. This may not be the best example, but we're going to work with it. So remember the four parts. First we have the hook. And then we have general statements about the topic. And then we have a research question or research questions. And then your thesis statement. So those are the parts of your introduction paragraph. Here's another introduction paragraph, and the topic is different this time. 
So, let's count the sentences. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And these are colored different in different colors. So we have your hook with the purple. And this part here, although there are multiple sentences, these are your general statements about general statements about the topic. The, here. the topic. And then here we have the research question. And then here we have the thesis statement. Now, if you were to read this, let's take a look at the first sentence and figure out what the topic is. Over the last decade, the organic food industry has grown rapidly. So, the topic here is going to be about or the organic food the organic food industry. So that's my topic. Okay. And then we have some general statements about the topic. The controlling idea is that these organic food shops or the industry of organic food is growing or has grown rapidly. And so general statements about this topic would be a kind of supporting, a group of supporting sentences that develops the big topic sentence. How has it grown? Well, customers are looking for alternative that alternative foods that are healthier. So that's one sentence. So that's one of the reasons why it has grown so much. <clears throat> the next sentence, most consumers of organic food purchase organic as opposed to conventional because of the belief that organic foods are healthier safer and tastes better so this sentence continues to develop the controlling idea by expanding on the reasons why people are looking for organic foods they think organic foods are healthier safer and tastier and this is a fact as well and the writer is citing the fact as such Okay, and notice the citation here. <clears throat> They're citing the last names of the author. I'll do that. So it's a piece of evidence. Cited evidence. Okay, there's more. Another reason for choosing organic foods is the belief that organic food production is less harmful to the environment and more sustainable. So another reason, another supporting idea, reason, because, so that points to a reason, that organic food is less harmful to the environment and it's more sustainable. Again, it's another cited fact. Two pieces of evidence. And these are general statements about a big topic, the growth of the organic food industry. Okay. So, next we have a research question. Looking at these facts, these general statements about the topic, your thesis statement begins first with asking a good question, a research question. So the re this research question reads, many claims to support these beliefs, so these claims here, these refer to the reasons why people are looking for more organic food, have been made. But, here's the question, is organic food actually scientifically proven to be better than conventional food? So this question is asking specifically about this statement that organic foods are believed to be healthier, safer, and 
tastier. So, the writer is asking if this is actually true, okay. using science to check it. So, her answer, the writer's answer is this. To research question. So you may have your answer. But the, re the writer has her own answer. And this writer says, the essay argues that, and here comes the answer, despite consumer perceptions, organic food, organically produced food, is not significantly more nutritious. So, again, back to this point. Appetizing. Okay. Tastier or even safer than organic conventionally produced food. So if you wanted to keep the same order, you might want to switch safer and appetizing. But her answer is she disagrees. The author here disagrees with the articles that she is referring to in the introduction. So she's saying in, in contrast to popular opinion or what consumers think, science, she claims, says that organic food is not any more nutritious, safe, or appetizing than conventional food. So when you, when I read your essay, that's what I'll be looking for. I'll be looking for a hook. I'll be looking for general statements about the topic. I'll be looking for a research question that you would ask, and I'll be looking for your answer to that question. <laughs> Okay. And here's the same example again. So, if you were to practice this, either you can try typing this on your Word document and look and try to identify the different parts. Or what you can do is you can take these different sentences and try writing them on your own. So for example, I might write something like this. So for example, I might write something like the organic food industry has grown over rapidly over the last decade. Okay, and I'm kind of making it up. It's not my topic, but I'm using the same structure. So general statements about this topic, I might say, <clears throat> I might use facts here. So I refer to some facts and evidence about the topic. So I might say something like, might need more than one point, so I might say something like 50% more consumers are now Reported buying organic food this year. Well, I might say fifty percent in Canada. Okay, and maybe 
one more. About two hundred more. About twenty more organic food shops are expected to open next year. So I have some facts here about the growth of organic of the growth of the organic food industry in Canada. Oh well if it's Canada I might actually 2000 might make more sense. Oh I might say Canadian consumers. And so my research question would might be I want to use a word here as a signal word for a research question is what do consumers believe that organic foods are better than Are they actually healthier, tastier, and safer? So there's two ways to write this research question. One, I could actually write the question, or two, I could rephrase the question into a sentence. I'll keep the same part. Keep the first part the same. Are better than conventional foods? Other consumers question whether they are or I can go back to the original antecedent because there's too many things. As I might say, and the other consumers ask whether organic foods are actually healthier, tastier, and safer. And finally, my answer to the thesis statement. According to recent scientific research, so this is another way of saying perhaps in my essay, because you're going to talk about scientific research to support the point, Organic foods are in fact no more healthier tastier and safer or safer than conventional foods. So that's my introductory paragraph here. It's an example. And then if I were if I'm satisfied with each of my sentences, I would try putting these together and check for check for grammar and any and structure in the paragraph itself. So that's the introduction paragraph. And then I would have my supporting points and why I think organic foods are not really better than or conventional foods. So my supporting paragraphs would have three reasons and the three reasons are right here. 
first one would be about the health benefits. The first one would be about the health benefits. The second one would be about the taste of organic food. And then the third one would be about its safety, whether they are safe to eat. Okay, and I would have do this three times, three separate paragraphs at least. And we already know how to do that. So you can practice, and if you have any questions practicing those, you can post your questions on Canvas or email me directly. All right, last part. Your conclusion. So just like you have a concluding sentence for your paragraphs, for each paragraph, you're going to have a conclusion for your essay. So your conclusion paragraph in your essay finishes the essay, brings the essay to a climax or close. It reminds the reader of their ideas. So imagine like a top and you've told them your answer, whether you agree or disagree, and you told them why you made your choice. And finally, so you've written your talk and you want to remind your reader or listeners, well, whether you actually agree or disagree with your points with the article that you read. So then readers can double check their understanding of whether your idea, whether they understand your ideas correctly. And your conclusion helps them to do that. And so here are some strategies of writing a conclusion. So you can choose one or more of these strategies in your conclusion and order them in a logical fashion. So the first one is to make an image for the reader. So this is like a big picture. Just like you have a big idea in your introduction paragraph. We have a big picture, like a summary. But helping the reader to put a picture, make a picture out of your, your essay, your point. You can also end in a note of hope despair. So it's a kind of prediction. So hope would be some sort of encouragement. Despair might be some sort of warning. Okay, you could suggest future research. So this is some kind of advice, especially scientifically, where you go, oh, well, research found, for example, if we stick with the organic food topic, that, yeah, apparently, um, organic food is no better than conventional food so may suggest oh okay um, we should research all our foods this way to carefully check if different kinds of food is actually healthier safer and tastier you can use quotations to do this so quotations would have other factual statements about your your conclusion that would summarize your points. You could recommend an action. So this is call to action or telling the readers to do something. You tell readers to do something. So for example, with the organic food topic, if organic food is no better than conventional food, and they're more expensive, you might want to tell the readers and say, well, buy conventional food, save money, right? And you, because you've just proved, or your essay has tried to prove that conventional food is no, no, not any worse. You're not gonna get any more benefits with conventional food. So you might buy conventional food, save money, right? You could, you're going to need to summarize your, your supporting points. Just like you summarized the supporting sentences in your conclusion. You're going to need to echo your intro, so it's like a paraphrase of your thesis statement. So this will be an echo of the introduction as well. So choosing these strategies will require a bit of logic. You're probably going to need one of these 
one of these maybe suggest future research give an image so maybe one two three and then sort of four you either sort of make a prediction so like an encouragement or warning okay and this one was a big picture or you would tell the readers to do something something they should do so here's an example of a conclusion so plus is a signal word for a conclusion the little circle of fried dough that's actually the donuts this is another way of saying donut draws us together so this is about the social life okay that's the topic there police and citizen senior and student anglophone and francophone so there's a drawing people together by day and by night through summer's heat and winter snow, the donut shop is there for us, our second home, our national refuge. So this one is using the big picture strategy. So notice here, the first sentence. <clears throat> so paraphrases or rephrases the thesis. And then the second sentence adds to that thesis by painting a picture, making a picture. Oh, what it is like, what the donut shop is like to Canadians, a second home, a national refuge that is there for you. All right, and so the last example, we're going to see how many of these strategies are there in this conclusion paragraph. Let's take a look. So let's let's break the paragraph down into sentences here. So when reading paragraphs, or what I do when I read your paragraph, I would break them down into sentences to see if you are using the right parts in your different paragraphs. So introduction, I'd look for introduction sentences and your thesis statement. In your conclusion, I'd look for conclusion sentences. Right now, that's what I'm doing. So in your writing, make sure to use the right sentences to say the right point. If you're using introduction, use introduction sentences. Use, if you're doing supporting points, use sentences for supporting points. If you're, using, if you're writing a conclusion paragraph, use the sentences for conclusion paragraphs. So that, here we go. Let's take a look. The first sentence, organic food continues to gain popularity in the diet choices of North Americans and this increasing demand for organic food will foster further research to investigate the topic, to investigate organic food claims. So this one echoes the topic. So that's the first sentence here and the and this writer used the strategy of echoing the topic and then the next sentence reads results from recent studies so that sounds like it's talking about the thesis statement have neither substantiated nor dismissed current claims made about the healthiness and safety of organic food and these claims remain controversial So this is a rephrase or a paraphrase of the thesis. All right, let's read the next sentence. When the USDA standards came into effect, the USDA secretary clarified that organic food certification was a production philosophy and organic labeling and, and organic labeling did not imply a superior product. So we have some facts to that to add that supports the thesis. Something that you haven't mentioned, but that is useful in the end of your essay to develop your idea further. The difficulty with published sizing findings from single studies is that 
their result is not sufficient to make adequate recommendations and often mislead the public. So another fact, safe production practices are required for all, recomm all commercially re produced food, whether organic or conventional. The number of factors that affect attributes of food, such as growing conditions, management practices, transportation, and storage, make it difficult to conduct a perfect control study. So, it is a fact, but it also makes a suggestion, or an advice, or an observation at least, about the research. And the last sentence, based on current literature, it does not appear that organically produced food is significantly more nutritious, appealing, and safe than conventionally produced food. So this is an even more direct paraphrase of the thesis statement. But here notice in this example, while the main body paragraphs of your essay would explain why organic foods is neither is not more any more nutritious, not any more new, not any more tastier or appealing, or not any more safe than regular food, the facts here in the conclusion talk about the research of these things um, and how the research can is limited to make to support these claims that organic foods are better. But what she found, the author found in her research is that no, it's not any better than regular food. So I'm going to go back to the strategies page here and check which ones she's used. So she restated the thesis in a new way. She echoed the introduction. She summarized different points. She did not recommend an action, so no, she did not do this. She used quotations, no, she used paraphrases, but has facts. Paraphrase of studies and results. Okay. Uh, she kind of suggested future research, but talked about what the limitations of the research. The donut paragraph has an image, but she did not use it in the food paragraph, and she did not end with a note or hope of despair in the paragraph. So she used four strategies out of the eight we've seen here, whereas the donut one used an image, for sure. Okay, so let's try our conclusion. So we have different strategies to choose. Now in the assignment that I posted for assignment two, I've given a guideline or a suggested structure for whether you agree or disagree with something. But we're going to need at least four sentences. So it's more than just rephrasing the thesis, you might want to do some things like echo introduction. I want to rephrase your thesis statement. Okay. You might want to talk about research and maybe for me, I, I'm just going to make I could use a call to action, for example. Okay, so what might these sentences look like if I follow these strategies? So a good practice for making your conclusion is to choose the strategies after you've written your essay, of course, so that means writing your introduction and finishing your supporting paragraphs. So then you actually have something to write about. So 
maybe I will talk about or echo the introduction. In conclusion, signal there. The growth of cannabis. Industry has raised over the last decade has raised raised questions about whether organic foods are actually better than conventional. Okay, so here I could logically follow with a thesis statement and rephrase it. However, as shown in recent scientific studies, or it's just in shown in recent studies, research has found that organic foods are not not superior or better not any better than conventional well I just use a different word regular foods in terms of nutrition, there's another word for health, for food, taste, and safety. There, as I rephrase my thesis statement, so I make suggestions about the research, or talk about the research, in light of this, future research comparing organic foods and nutritional and conventional foods should continue Evaluating their health, taste, and safety qualities in order to provide consumers with better. on which foods to buy. So therefore, it's my call to action. The studies. Therefore, <clears throat> until future studies prove that organic foods are indeed better than regular food. Consumers in Canada, Canadian consumers should <laughs> I would say stick with, and that's kind of slang. Stay with buying conventional foods to save, save money.
something like that. So there we go. A conclusion that wraps up and brings the essay to a climax. And it's all typed up here in my Word document. So you can try the same technique using your points from the slides. You can take notes on these about the strategies you choose, you use for your conclusion or the funnel for your introduction paragraph and then write them up here in point form but these points are complete sentences that you can use to make your paragraphs if you have any questions about this you can post on canvas or email me directly uh, make sure to practice this for your assignment start now you only have less than seven you only have about less than four days so that's oh that's like 96 hours it's not a lot of time you're going to need to spend time on this so i suggest you start now again good luck that's the end of day three stay tuned for tomorrow about essays